This story is called Sports by Elizabeth Love. For some years now, I've been trying to grow the biggest carrot. Cecil always grows a bigger one, and the soup he makes is phenomenal. I keep wondering when I will have the chance to make a significant soup. My best friend Wally won the lettuce competition last year. She gloats about it because she knows it makes me irritable. When I point this out, she just laughs and laughs and laughs. She also tells me winning isn't everything. I am learning this lesson most slowly. We all help each other collect manure and seaweed and charcoal for the beds. No one particularly likes hauling carts of seaweed or getting dirty moving charcoal. A manure duty is the worst of all, but you can't enjoy victory without grime under your nails. This is an important lesson we learn playing garden games. Garden games are not for everyone. It takes a certain kind of determined personality to persevere. It also requires a lot of patience. Sometimes the crop is lost of frost or trampled by deer or stolen by rabbits. The first season Cecil entered the carrot competition, his crop was stolen and he retaliated by slaughtering an entire bunny family. We ate really well that night, but we had to listen to a lecture on temper tantrums. Cecil was almost exiled from the garden, but everybody agreed he should have another chance to grow. He ended up designing some really great fencing that keeps the rabbits out of the garden. Many moons later, the rabbits still hold a grudge about the massacre and seriously resent the fence. I can't really blame them, but I'm happy not to have lost any carrots, even if I never win. Sometimes I spy on Cecil, but I still haven't discovered his secret. Wally says it is singing, but I don't want to believe she is right because my singing voice is terrible and that might mean I can never win. Besides, I say really complimentary things to my carrots all the time and they grow very big. Cecil's just grow a little bigger. Lately, I've been thinking about trying potatoes. I don't want to abandon carrots. I just thought exploring potatoes might be interesting. You can make food and liquor and energy from potatoes. No one really cares about energy because we have windmills and waterfalls, but almost everyone likes liquor, especially potato liquor. There's a lot of competition in liquor games, but I have an idea to mix mine with raspberries or blueberries, maybe both. No one's done that before. It could be my edge. I also like the idea of having my own distiller. Distillers attract all kinds of people, and I like people. Wally blows glass so I can get her to make most of the parts I need. The real problem is time. If I'm going to nurture potatoes and master flavoring, I'll have to forsake something I love, like boat building or lambing. I've also considered herbs. Like liquor, everyone likes the herbs that get you high best, but I have a strong affinity for mint. I don't know anyone who hates minty breath. It's really hard to decide what to do in life when there are so many good choices. Wally says I should try everything, but stick with making art. She especially likes it when I chalk pictures of her. I think it's already pretty obvious she is one of the nicer faces around the village, and she shouldn't need pictures, but she claims I get her moods right. I have to admit that's true because my favorite picture of her is the one I made when she thought the broccoli contest was judged unfairly. No one puts more effort into garden games than Cecil. I see him working the garden at all times of the day and night. He's really inspirational that way. He hasn't been around at all today, which is very peculiar, especially since we always check progress when the moon crescents. I pull one of my carrots from the test bed with great disappointment. It's not near where it should be. I become suspicious. Maybe Cecil sabotaged my crop. I'm the only one who ever comes close to beating him. He's probably hiding now because he has a guilty conscience. I run to his sleeping place and go inside without warning. Cecil is sweaty sick. Cecil! He opens his eyes a crack. Did you piss on my bed? What? His voice is weak. You pissed on my bed! No, he says. 
I don't believe him. Cheaters always lie. You'll do anything to win. I wouldn't, he protests. He will never admit it, so I go complain to Wally. I don't think he would do that, Wally says. I wish he was more outraged on my behalf. How does he always win? He works harder than you, she answers. He's always singing while you're dreaming and painting. She has a point here I'd prefer not to see. It's so much more appealing to believe he's a cheat. Go tend to your bed, she says. I think about Wally's words while I weed. I know Cecil doesn't cheat. I am ashamed to have even accused him. Back at the garden, Cecil's bed is very dry. He hasn't watered, which means he's been sicker longer than I've noticed. I wonder why no one else has watered his bed. This makes me sad. We all need to be good sports. I water Cecil's bed.